These computers, perhaps one of the most significant inventions in history, have completely changed the world. Yes, before them, there were transistors, before that, the binary number system, and so on. If it weren't for these advancements, discussions about the discovery of electricity would be very different. But as a final product, using all of these, computers became a groundbreaking invention for humanity in a real sense. In every way, it truly blossomed, even though the last quarter of the 20th century is seen as the period when rapid development began, the history of computers dates back much further, approximately 2,500 years. We're talking about the abacus. Yes, comparing an abacus to today's supercomputers might not seem very logical. However, when we get to the basics, the working principle of today's supercomputers is almost identical to that of an abacus. Performing many operations in succession much faster than many humans can. Besides, we shouldn't underestimate the abacus. The abacus, found in the Middle East around 500 BC, would be the fastest computer known and used for about 2,200 years until the 17th century. Then, in 1642, the French scientist and philosopher Blaise Pascal, only 18 years old, stepped onto the scene and invented the first mechanical calculator known to us to assist his father in tax calculations. This calculating machine, also known as the Pascaline or arithmetic machine, could perform addition and subtraction with a few gears. About 20 to 30 years later, he invented a machine similar to Pascal's, but much more advanced, called the lightning machine. The lightning machine could not only perform addition and subtraction, but also multiplication, division, and even take square roots, and it had a memory mechanism similar to today's computers for the first time. But it didn't stop there, it advanced even further. However, another groundbreaking discovery that went beyond its time in the history of computers was found by Leibniz in the binary number system. As you know, we're talking about the zeros and ones that form the basis of all today's computers. It was a way of expressing numbers using zeros and ones. Unfortunately, Leibniz did not use the binary number system. But about a century after his death, the Englishman George Bull, in 2854, developed a mathematical field known today as Boolean algebra using this system. In modern computers, this is the binary number system, and this was a system of Leibniz that could make simple decisions with long strings of zeros and ones. For the 19th century, the ideas of these two geniuses, as you can imagine, were so ahead of their time that it would take 50 to 100 years for mathematicians and computer scientists to discover and use these revolutionary ideas. Certainly, the Pascal and Lightning machines we've been talking about so far, in today's definition, are not really computers. They were simply calculators that significantly accelerated calculations and, most importantly, required human intervention to carry out all processes. As we know them today, computers are machines that can automatically operate without human intervention by executing instructions stored in their memory through guide programs that we could describe as mathematical definitions. The person we previously discussed in detail in a video and who was the first to envision such an advanced machine would be Charles Babbage. Many consider him the father of the modern computer because do you know what his machines, which he conceived or planned, had? An input, a memory that stores complex numbers, a processor, and a printing mechanism. These are the fundamental elements we encounter in modern computers. However, due to the technological limitations of the time, Babbage unfortunately failed to produce any of the machines he understood, and it was only much later that I saw his plans working in the form of a computer on the table. By the way, Ida Byron, or also known as Countess Lovelace, who has been assisting me constantly, is known as the world's first computer programmer. She initially started working on the use of her machine in the navigation of ships or for military purposes. Although she could not succeed in her lifetime, towards the end of the 19th century, other names took up this flag. 
One of them is the American scientist Herman Hollerith. With his machine named Tabulator, a term that means table maker and also the reason why the tab key on keyboards is named, he solved the census problem that had become a major issue in the United States at that time. Afterward, he realized that his machine could be used in other fields and, in 1896, he founded a company, thereby introducing the computer to commercial use for the first time. Later, this company's name would become the Computing Tabulating Recording Company, or CTR, and finally, in 1924, it would adopt the name International Business Machines, known as IBM. So, we are talking about the IBM we know. Later on, a figure named Vannevar Bush, who may not be widely known, but played a role in changing the history of computers from its roots, emerged onto the scene, as I will mention shortly. Also, during the times when the National Research Foundation was established, Vannevar Bush, a scientist working under the U.S. government, was producing machines capable of similar processes. He named one of them the Differential Analyzer and later changed it to Differential Analyzers. Although this machine, consisting of 320 kilometers of cables and 150 electric motors, could perform incredibly complex calculations, it was a bit slow. It could perform. Just around this time, World War II had intensified, marking the beginning of those colorful and eventful years. However, one of the important figures assigned in the history of computers was at the helm of the Manhattan Project. Yes, he was one of the directors of the project that developed the atomic bomb. Nevertheless, during this period, he continued his work and, in 1945, designed a memory and information sharing device called Mimics. This Mimics later inspired Tim Berners-Lee and laid the foundations for the World Wide Web, the Internet as we know it today. He was one of those crucial figures who remained hidden until this date, as you'll understand. However, when we talk about the history of computers, especially in the 20th century, we cannot overlook the great genius who left a mark on this field. An incredibly brilliant mathematician, a name who formulated the theory of the logic of computers and changed history in every sense, is Alan Turing. In 1936, at the young age of 23, he published a mathematical paper on the decision problem with an application that included computable numbers. In this paper, he detailed a theoretical computer known today as the Turing machine. This machine was a simple information processing device that could read data with specific commands, print results, and then move on to the next command. Wait, these ideas would later impact the entire field, triggering all the developments that would follow. Therefore, for many people, Alan Turing is seen as the father of the modern computer. Although Turing was primarily a theorist, he also played an active role in the production of actual machines. Especially during World War II, he played a crucial role in the victory of the United Kingdom by breaking Germany's best codes. Today, in an era where artificial intelligence is rapidly advancing, Alan Turing, who introduced us to the Turing test, allowing us to understand whether a computer is truly intelligent or not, is not the end of the story. Let me tell you now that we will make a separate video about him. During a time when the Second World War was crucial in every sense, building-sized computers began to emerge. In 1938, German engineer Konrad Zuse developed the world's first programmable computer based on a binary system known as the Z1 in the house where he lived with his family. Immediately after that, American physicist John Atanasoff and electrical engineer Clifford Berry developed a much more advanced computer named the Atanasoff Berry computer. The main feature of these machines was that they stored numbers for the first time using electrical switches. If the switches were open, it represented 1. If closed, it represented 0. Doing operations that were previously done with gears and wheels with electrical switches made these computers the world's first digital computers. The most comprehensive first digital computer emerged at Harvard University in 1944. 
Supported by mathematician Howard Aiken, ABM, he produced a computer called Harvard Mark I, which was 15 meters long. Although capable of performing very complex calculations with over 3,000 electrical switches, the opening and closing of these switches took time. Again, it is worth noting that most of these machines were produced for military purposes. All countries were seeking ways to win the war using these capabilities. During World War II, military resources employed thousands of scientists for this purpose. All of them dedicated themselves to technological advancements under the Scientific Research and Development Office led by the United States, involving more than 10,000 scientists in America alone. In Germany, things were a bit different. Comrade Zeus had shared his invention with the government and wanted to produce the Z2 computer to hand it over. However, the leaders of Germany at that time deemed it unnecessary. Allies, on the other hand, in a massive development effort from all sides, in 1943, a team of mathematicians in London, including Turing, produced a computer named Colossus to break secret German codes. Colossus was the world's first fully electronic computer in history. It used vacuum tubes instead of electrical relays. The thumb-sized vacuum tubes allowed for much more compact and faster computers. By the way, Colossus was completely a secret project, and the world had no idea until the end of the war. Therefore, when we talk about the first fully automatic computer with vacuum tubes, another computer that comes to people's minds is the one developed by John Motchley and Presper Eckert from the University of Pennsylvania. In fact, they took the name from Vannevar Bush's differential analyzer. ENIAC, to put it simply, was a massive beast. This monster, operating with 18,000 vacuum tubes, measuring 24 meters in length and weighing 30 tons, was constructed with a column-based architecture. In fact, it is the world's first fully electronic general-purpose digital computer. ENIAC initiated this revolution, and computers like EDVAC, prepared with contributions from John von Neumann, began to emerge. General purpose computer sales had started, but there was a problem. Yes, vacuum tubes were a significant development, but they had issues. For instance, ENIAC was highly unreliable. You might have heard the rumors, although not proven to be accurate, it was said that the vacuum tubes of ENIAC emitted light like a light bulb, attracting bugs. One of these bugs got inside and caused a short circuit, leading to the computer crashing, as we would say today. The term bug in English means an insect and is used among programmers as a term indicating a problem in their code. This is how vacuum tubes began to pose a problem. To make computers exceeding 30 tons more powerful, more vacuum tubes were needed. This would mean computers weighing over 100 tons. Yes. This possibility was a problem, and an entirely new revolution was needed. This revolution would come with transistors, emerging alongside the quantum physics revolution, and would propel the world forward at full speed. And thus, we have come to the end of this video. Your thoughts are very valuable and important to me. Please share your opinions with me in the comments section. Until we meet again, goodbye.